episode of the Camogie Report podcast. It's a huge weekend for Tipperary coming Tipperary Camogie coming up. We have a massive double header in the County Camogie Ground to drag with both our juniors and seniors kicking off the Glen Dimplex All Ireland Championship. Our juniors will take on Wicklow at two thirty p.m. While our seniors take on Dublin at five p.m. Both games, like I said, on Saturday, uh, June the tenth, this Saturday. So. We're urging for a massive crowd to get to the rag on Saturday. It's actually the only home game for both our seniors and juniors. So we really need a good, good crowd at this game. Um, we have brilliant support at both the junior and senior Monster Finals recently. So let's hope this continues for this weekend. We'll have our under 10 teams playing mini games at halftime of both games. We ran a very popular mascot competition there recently and we'll have our four mascots joining our giant captains for both games as well. So a huge um, occasion. There's going to be a great buzz, I know, on Saturday in the County Camogie Crowns of the Rag. And we really look forward to both games. So I suppose we'll just look forward to the tip and uh, Wicklow game at first. Whatever the outcome on Saturday, this is a really historic occasion. First time to Brewery and Wicklow would have met in a competitive action. Um, there's only three teams in this group one of the Junior Championship Cavan, Wicklow and Tipperary. So a win for Tip would guarantee them at least a quarterfinal spot because Wicklow already lost one game so far. They played Cavan two weeks ago, um, the 27th of May in Wicklow and Cavan had a comfortable 7.20 to 1.9 victory over Wicklow that day. Um, I suppose Tipperary manager David Sullivan had the advantage of being, being able to go to Avondale and Wicklow and watch that game and check out both oppositions. Remember last year, Cavan came to tip and they had a one-point victory over us um, in the rag in the opening round of the championship. Cavan went on then to reach the other in semi-final to very fail to get out of the group stages last year. So we're hoping for a winning start against Wicklow. Look, I suppose the big question is how much can Wicklow improve in time for this Saturday? Um, no doubt there'll be a better side than what uh, lost to Cavan. Um, whether they improve enough is the question. Tipperary will be confident going in, having beaten Fork and Limerick in Munster Championship recently, capturing that Munster final with a win over Limerick. But I know the management and the players wouldn't have been overly pleased with either performances. They know they've used things to work on to improve on. I think I suppose the conversion rate really probably didn't score enough in either game and weren't clinical enough up front. So lots of things to work on, but uh, we are going in as Munster Championships uh, and Munster Champions, and that has given, the I suppose, the whole squad a huge boost of confidence. But look, I'd imagine Wicklow have had two weeks now to really work on things that they need to prove on, get their, um, I suppose, the defensive mistakes they made against Cavan to concede seven goals. I mean, that was, a re- you know, huge amount of goals to concede in an all Ireland Championship game. So they'll be looking to uh, fix the wrongs of that. Um, they have a game under their belt. So look, I suppose we definitely can't be taking the for granted. We don't know too much about them. And um, all Tipperary can do really is focus and concentrate on their own performances. Um, the league and most championship, we've seen sort of different 15 player starts in different games, but I suppose some players really have cemented their positions. Lisa Calder, centre back, has been brilliant all year, really impressive there. Uh we joined Captain Sienna Walsh has featured either wing or corner back. Amy Callan from McCarthy Burris really improved in every game. And she's made uh, the wing back position her own was excellent in that Munster final. Um the other joint captain and Claire Statham who across Bally Cal. She's mainly featured in the half forward line, but I was really impressed with her when she went in full forward and once her final got two points and won a f- crucial free as well. So it'll be interesting to see where she starts at the weekend. I suppose her top forward has been Jean Kelly. Um, you know, she's been really a potent attacker for Tipperary this year throughout the league and uh, in the Munster Championship. So I suppose Tipperary will be aiming to get uh, Jean on as much ball as possible and uh you know, let's try and get off to a winning start against Wicklow on Saturday. That's at 2 30 pm in the County Mood Grounds in the Rag. Um, just to look ahead more to that game, I caught up with Kieran Mikko and Eve Malachny, um, two players off the team there recently at training, and I also spoke to manager David Sullivan. 
joined by uh, Kieran McHugh and Aoife Malachny. Aoife, we'll start with you, I suppose. Uh, you're supposed to only days out really to the start of the All-Ireland Championship, coming in on the back of in the Munster final. What's the mood like in the camp? Oh, yeah, look, the mood is, is great. Like, you know, it, it's, it's a lot different heading into a championship with a, with a title under your belt. It's been a long time since, I suppose, this group have kind of had that. So we're looking forward now to the next challenge and ready to go for it as well, I suppose. Yeah, so I, I suppose compared to last year, you were involved last year and you would have got knocked out in the first round of the Munster Championship. Coming in, like you said, to have won a Munster final, it must be a big... Uh, psychological boost oh yeah absolutely like look you know everything like does it this group of players haven't really won much coming up along and there's been few of us there have been playing for quite a long time so to have that kind of like belief in ourselves now that look we are good enough to go and challenge against the good teams and we're good enough to go out and win something you know that having that win behind us now will really bring us along for the rest of the championship very good and Kira, I suppose looking back on the Munster final win and even in the semi-final against Cork like results I suppose are the main thing and you got to the two wins two fantastic wins but I'm sure there's aspects of the game that you weren't probably fully satisfied with and things you want to improve on for the next day definitely I don't think anybody was happy with our performance um, in the semi or the final for that matter we definitely would think we are much better than that and going forward it's up to us to, to bring that performance and put our game to the teams that we're playing to the likes of Wicklow the likes of Cavan we have to impose our game on them and not be sitting back and waiting for teams to see what they bring we need to start influencing the game from the start yes yeah, so well that was going to be my next question you know you're playing Wicklow in the first round Saturday 10th of June and at home in the County Camogie grounds you wouldn't you won't know much about Wicklow I'd imagine I don't know if Tip have ever played Wicklow in the history of Camogie but you're obviously you're not going to take them for granted you know Cavan came to the rag last year you didn't know much about them you knew all about them I suppose by the end of the match so I'm sure you're just going to go out and concentrate on your own performance or what's what's the plan for the Wicklow game? Yeah, definitely. We have to focus on ourselves, but we can't take for granted the fact that these are two teams' first teams. They're not junior teams in regards as the second team like we are. It's their first team, so they're going to have confident players, they're going to have experienced players, but like, where else would we rather be that day only in the rag with a double header with the girls and you know having our home crowd and hopefully deliver a win on the day as well? And Aoife, then just looking ahead to the Wicklow match, like I said, Kira, there haven't played them before, don't know too much about them, I'd imagine. Um, but, you know, they obviously lost to Cavan in the first round. I'm sure the stand to them haven't played a game. Would you be worried going in, kind of, I suppose, with no game played yet? Um, look, I suppose we've kind of been lucky enough that we've had two championship games, I suppose, in the last month as well. So, like, yeah, they've had a, a championship match against Cavan, but, like, I think those two games, like Kira would have said, would have brought us on a huge amount as well. Um, like, it's been championship pace, the two of them, like, real tough competitive games so I think that will absolutely stand to us against Wicklow like you said we don't know a huge amount about them but like like you said they're a first team as well they're going to be strong they're going to be physical so we have to just like we have to get ourselves ready for that and be prepared for what comes and then obviously uh, after Wicklow you have to go to Cavan hoping hopefully we'll have a win under our belt travelling to Cavan but um, you know Cavan were very strong last year looking back on them what, what, would, what would their main strengths or what, what would you be looking out for this year playing against them Oh, look, yeah, Cavan were, were very good. Um, like people probably underestimated them a little bit last year. Like you know, like we said, they are their first team. They're a group of players that, especially would have been their first team. They've they've trained together as a panel of players for the last five six years. You know, same kind of management, same kind of players, year in year out. And I suppose that's where sometimes we get caught. That you know, sometimes we're starting year after year. The last three or four years, there's been different managements in Tipperary, the junior team. So you know, that can be a little bit of a challenge. So. But I think this year we're going really well. Like we have a huge backing with the lads. They, they're very supportive of what we do. And like when looking out at Cavan, like we just have to look at like they're going to be physical. They're going to be tough. They're going to be strong. But like Kira said, they're like we have to start going out and imposing ourselves. Like we can be big, tough, and strong and physical as well, you know. So we just have to really make sure that we bring the game to them and not let them kind of crowd us out and all of that kind of thing. So perfect. Best look, girls, on the tent. Thanks, Thanks. Sir. David. I suppose we're here at training session only. A week and a half out from the start of the All-Ireland Championship, uh, how's the form in the camp and any injury concerns? Uh, I suppose, look, Jordan, we obviously we won the Munster Championship there on the 21st of May, so we took a week off there last week because we've been on the go since the 18th of November and we put a huge emphasis on the league to try and stay in Division 2 and obviously the Munster Championship came soon after, so we hadn't a chance to give the girls a break in between the league and the Munster Championship, so we took the last week off. Um, bodies are good, look, girls are, are enthusiastic about getting back. Um, a break is as good as, as 10 training sessions, you know, to recover the hunger and that kind of stuff, so um, without, without Rachel Dwyer going forward for the rest of the season, obviously Rachel... Um, suffered a, a season ending hand injury there uh, just before the Munster final against Limerick so she's out for the rest of the year and Sarah Madden has gone travelling to America but we have a couple of girls back now Amy Cross is back and um, 
Miriam Murphy is back in full tilt again and Sir McGrath is back as well so and we've Kira Brennan coming into our squad as well so we four players back there now that we didn't have in the Munster campaign so while we're losing two we're gaining four so um, we're really looking forward to now to the start of the All-Ireland series. And look it was fantastic to win the Munster and you know a great achievement two wins really against Cork and Limerick but you know I'm sure there's aspects of the performances that you weren't fully happy with and would like to see improvements. Yeah of course look I suppose as I said we put a huge emphasis on the league and we had to hurry really, really well every every day in the league because when you're playing intermediate sides if you're any way off at all you'll just get beaten and that's the way it is and I suppose um, uh, we probably took for granted our, our league form that we'll continue into the Munster campaign and I suppose we were a little bit flat in the two games and we made hard work with them when realistically we were probably on top in both games but um, look we learned a lot from that you know we've learned that if you're any way off at all in this junior campaign you know teams are going to put it right up to you so it's a learning curve for us and um, look we're going to focus and knuckle back down now on getting back to basics and doing it right and, and and getting going again and, and powering on for the rest of the season. And we welcome Wicklow to the rag on the 10th of June. They've had one game played already, a defeat to Cavan. They have to win this game. No doubt they'll be going all out. Um, you probably got a chance to see the Wicklow and Cavan game. So what will your focus be, I suppose? Without giving away too much, we just... <laughs> For, oh, well, I suppose, yeah, we, we travelled to uh, we travelled to uh, Wicklow there last Saturday evening to watch the game and I uh, suppose Cavan ran out convincing winners in the second half but in the first half it was only I think it was 4-7 to 1-8 at half time so there was nothing in it a couple of soft Cavan goals near the end of the first half kind of put a glass in the first half and I suppose second half then they really powered on and showed their class but I suppose a win against Wicklow would mean we're in an All-Ireland quarter final on the 7th of July and when we started at the 18th of November last year in Dr Morris Park that was the goal and the aim that come that date in July that we would be in the knockout stages of this competition with as good a chance as anybody else of winning at this competition so I suppose the Wicklow chance is, is our first chance of getting that so we're hoping to get over the line and secure our place in that and then face into Cavan but look everything will be on the line for Wicklow the next day you know they were in the Nancy Murray um, Cup final last year they lost to Tyrone I know Camogie is making great strides up there so they'll come full of enthusiastic as well and they'll try their best to, to get the result to stay in the Championship Saturday week but we just have to concentrate on ourselves and what we need to do and I suppose that's all we've done all year is we set out a certain set of goals for ourselves for the year and we've just worked towards that goal since since day one and our goal now for this uh, campaign is to make the knockout stages and we get a chance on the 10th of June to do that so in front of our home crowd as part of a double header with the seniors it's a perfect opportunity maybe to secure our place in the knockout stage of the competition. And speaking about the home crowd I thought there was great support in Holy Cross for the Munster final no doubt you're going to want to see even more in, in the County Comey grounds on the 10th of June. Yeah since even since the day one we played Cork down below in, in Castlefield in the first round of the league at the end of February you know, the mums and dads of, of the girls on this panel have been very, very loyal to us. They've travelled all over the place, Galway, you know, with a great crowd in Galway and Ballandreen in, in that game against Galway in the last round of the league, the Munster semi final at home to Cork, and obviously the final at Limerick the last day in Holy Cross. So we've had great numbers, and you know, it's, it's great for the girls that, you know, even at the end of the game, the last day to see their family members and stuff running onto the field to congratulate them and get photos and stuff. That's what it's all about, you know, that's why you train all years to have moments like that. So the crowd do add that little bit of edge to us. So we are hoping to see, you know, when we have the double header on the 10th of June as many tip people out you know we've never had it as good in Tipperary Camogie with three Munster titles in seven days so there is a bit of a high there but it's like everything Geraldine to continue that high we have to stay winning and that, that's the challenge ahead of all Tipperary teams for the next couple of weeks that you know while it's great that we've won the Munsters and stuff like that the ultimate goal when you play for Tipperary is to win in All-Ireland and ourselves and the seniors start our campaign on the 10th of June so it would be great to see as many as we can to cheer the two of us on that day to kick start our campaign. Perfect thanks David. No problem. So yeah, really looking forward to that on Saturday to Brewery and Wicklow in the junior, then Dimplex Junior All Ireland Championship uh, round one. The other game then after that would be Tipperary and Dublin at 5 pm. So again, like our junior team, team team are coming into this game with, with lots of confidence having won the Munster final, first pit of silverware since 2010 when we last won that Munster title. Um, I suppose we were bitterly disappointed not to get to a league final this year, losing out to Kilkenny in the final league game. but team have dusted themselves off, Be oh, fancied Waterford side who had beaten Cork the previous week um, and then you know we're comfortable winners over clear in that Munster final we had Emer Heffernan score a brilliant goal in both the Waterford and the Clare game, Paul Devan, Grace O'Brien, Cueve Martin, Roisin Howard all in great form up front, Emer McGrath has taken over some of the free taking too, he's taken a lot of the 45s, she's been notching up scores both from frees and from plays, she's like to start in the half forward line uh, Karen Kendi, obviously one of their joint captains. She's been immense there at centre back there in the Munster Championship. Uh, picked up player of the match in the Munster final and is also recently nominated for player of the month. 
my Cueva birthday between the posts has been very effective during the goals. Um, but look, on Saturday, Dublin will be coming to the rally. They'll be looking to spoil, I suppose, the recent good positive mood in the camp. Um, last year, when the sides met into group stages, we needed a fantastic late, late free from Cod fan to draw the game. Um, in the league this year, Tipperary won 213 to 1 6, but it was by no means a, a, a brilliant Tipperary performance. You know, we've kind of struggled and, and you know, over against Dublin that day. Um, but look, Dublin looked to be hitting form really at the right time. And they had a Leinster Championship campaign recently. Bet Wexford in the semi final, I think it was a one point win. And um, that gave them a real boost. They then took on Kilkenny and they went toe to toe with Kenny for the whole game. Um, they matched their opponents all the way to the final whistle. I think it was a late scrappy goal from Kenny two minutes from, from um, one time that put a bit of daylight between the sides. But it was a 114 to 13 point victory for uh, Kilkenny in the end. But Dublin led at different occasions that day. So, uh, like I said, Dublin, you know, maybe after hitting Miss League, um, really looked to be coming into good form under their management manager there, Jerry McQuaid. So um, they'd be confident coming to the ride. They know they, they can go toe to toe with Tip. And Tip really needs to be at their best on Saturday if they're to get a win. I suppose Ashley Maher was Dublin's chief scorer. She scored. Um, Six points in that Leinster final, five from freeze. Ashley O'Neill then had four points from play as well. So, you know, Tip will be very familiar with this open side. So you'll be familiar for College Camogie as well, a lot from uh, one Ashburn's during the year as well. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see, do, does Dennis Kelly and his management team go at the same start in 15, that one Munster final? Um, it's unlikely that they'll change a winning team, but there are players certainly pushing for places um, we had Marie Everson and Mary Ryan come into the backs that day uh, in the Munster final, two regulars on the starting team last year. Kira Maher, another another player that um, you know, was wing back last year, but she was out with concussion, so was, wasn't in contention for a starting place for the Munster Championship, but she's back uh, uh, to full fitness now. So it'll be interesting to see if she can break into the team. Uh, in the Munster final, then we had likes of Cueva McCarthy, Neve Tracy, and Arena Friday all made a big impact off the bench and again are likely to cause some selection headaches for the management, along with other players like Dakota McTeer is back training, back full fitness, looking really good. Um, and then you have the likes of Claire Hogan as well, always makes a huge impact off the bench and, um, you know, is, is, is will provide uh, real options there for the Tiberi management team. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Again, we're looking for great support on Saturday. Um, it could be the difference between winning and losing against Dublin is our home support. Hopefully a big crowd, big cheer, to very cheer going down the home straight. Um, so let's hope that we all get out and get all, uh, all the clubs get out and, and support both our Tipperary teams at the weekend. So looking ahead to the big game, uh, I caught up at training with... Uh, Selector Linda Grogan and Emer Lukeman and Green Blair to get their thoughts ahead of the big game. So I'm joined now by Selector Linda Grogan. Linda, um, I suppose you've huge experience playing with Tip and with Cashel um, back in the day, but you're involved this year with Dennis Kelly as Selector. I suppose I'm sure a lot of things are the same, but there's a lot of differences too since you were playing. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, the game has changed an awful lot. Um, I would think it's far more professional now. Um, you know, we, we probably put in the same amount of effort when we were there playing ourselves at club and, and county, but I think there's just an added professionalism there. It's probably more of a commitment, I think, involved at the moment because, you know, it's no longer kind of a three or four night a week, you know, going training. There's gym sessions, you know, there's nutritionists involved and girls are tracking their sleep what they're eating, you know, so it's it's far more professional, um, a lot more to it. Um, but I think it has added to the game and I think the girls are getting far more from it um, with the setup at the moment. And I suppose one thing that probably has stayed the same is you still have the likes of Kilkenny, Galway, Cork, or probably really are the top three teams, you know, now and I suppose the top three competitors when Tip were going well back, in the, back when you were playing, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. Like you can, Galway, Cork, Kilkenny are always going to be at the top, you know, um, and that's no different now. Um, I suppose Tipperary were probably closer back, you know, going back 10, 12 years ago, 
um, but we're definitely pushing and you know we're hoping that we will be at the, the, the top end come championship at the end of championship season. And just looking ahead then, you know, we're only, I suppose, days out from the first round of the championship against Dublin. You know, he, he uh, drew with Dublin last year, I suppose, bet him in the league, but, you know, it was hard work to get over Dublin. It always is, so I'm sure you're expecting the same on Saturday, 10th of June. Absolutely. I think Dublin, uh, you know, are a team that bring an awful lot of physicality. Um, I would probably describe them as kind of spoilers of the game really, you know, they, they seem to know how to get in your face, make things difficult and while we're very confident, you know, that if we show up with a, a good team performance, we, we should be able to get over the line but they certainly won't make it easy for us. And obviously we're coming in after winning the Munster Championship, um, but you know Dublin then ran Kilkenny very close in the Leinster Championship. So you know they'd be all guns blazing, really coming down to the rag on Saturday week. No doubt about it. I mean, league is great, and you get some good preparation games in the league. But you know, come Championship, it's you know it's totally different setup, and I've no doubt that Dublin will come firing on all cylinders, and they'll be stronger and a much better team than we saw in the league back a few months ago. Linda, thanks very much. I'm joined now by Emer Luke, man. Emer, I suppose we're only days out from the start of the All Ireland series. It's where what you've been training for and preparing all year. Uh, what's the mood like in the camp? Mood's really good. Training's been good. Great numbers of training, great effort. I suppose we've been training since last November, December for this. We're really looking forward to it. It's been a great block of training since the Munster final. And I suppose coming in after winning the Munster Championship must give an added boost to the whole setup. It is a great boost, but again, it doesn't give you any guarantees of winning a match. We're going back out to Dublin, Wex for Kilkenny, Kilkenny beating us in the last, last round of the league, so we definitely won't take anything for granted with any of the teams. And you always, I suppose, find it hard against Dublin. Drew last year in Dublin, you have him at home. It was tough in the league away as well, so what are you expecting from the Dublin challenge? It's always very tough against Dublin over the years. It's always been a close match. We've drew with him a good few years, always only being a point or two in it. We expect it to be a close battle again. And I imagine there's huge competition for places. You know, you've just played a panel match there this evening and you know, a lot of players showing great form. Massive. Uh, there's a lot of players putting their hands up for positions. Management have a very tough job picking it. Thanks very much, Emer. Joined now by Kareem Blair. Kareem, I suppose we're only days out from the Championship. Just had a panel match there. Serious competition for places. Uh, yeah, there's great fight within the panel. Um, everyone's really showing up. The hard work is really paying off now. And it's good we can see everything we're doing in the drills is really showing in the matches now. So, yeah, there'll be serious competition for places. And first up is uh, Dublin at home on the 10th of June. It's a double header with the juniors playing Wicklow. I'm sure you're hoping for a big crowd of support from Tipperary. Yeah, hopefully. Um, we always love the support coming in and hopefully at the first match there's big excitement for it, the first one out. And especially in the home venue we'd hope to see a good crowd come to support us, especially with the two matches on. And the matches are going to come thick and fast in Dublin, Wexford and Kilkenny. Um, but I suppose this is what you're training for all year. I'm sure you're looking forward to it. Yeah, we are. This is what we're training for all year, as you said. So uh, it's just big uh, importance on getting the recovery in, in between the matches and managing the load. And yeah, we've been training all year for it. So we should be well able for it. And how was your own? I know you had a few injuries during the year. You are fit and ready, raring to go. Yeah, back in full swing now, hopefully. Um, hopefully we'll stay injury clear now for the next while. But yeah, flying hopefully. And uh, what's it like winning the Munster Championship? You know, I suppose the time to reflect on it now. Obviously a great uh, confidence booster heading into the All-Ireland Series. Yeah, it was brilliant to see some results coming through and all our hard work paying off of it. But I suppose we have to park that and put that behind us now and look forward. We can't be banking on that going forward. It's a totally new ball game now coming with the All-Ireland Series. Perfect. Thanks a million. So that's all for this week's episode of the Comoldy Report podcast. I hope you enjoyed it as we looked ahead, look ahead to uh, a big, big double header this Saturday in the County Comoldy Grounds of the Rag. It's the only place to be this Saturday, 2.30 Tipperary and Wicklow uh, get on the way in the All Ireland Junior Championship and then a 5 p.m. tip in Dublin in the All Ireland Senior Championship. Hope to see you there and uh, we'll chat you again soon.